regardless of the outside circumstance, whatever that could have been, the, the earth changing, life changing event, what it has done is absolutely reinvigorated people to get passionate about why they do what they're doing and make them more intentional for the hour, work hours that they're putting in. Because again, I've, being bell to bell man, running the lot, you start blurring. It, it almost feels like quarantine because after a couple of days, you're wondering what day is it? Is it Saturday yet? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No um, so I, I totally agree with you. And moving into telecom from automotive, I, I saw that too. Is not only that the produ uh, productivity go up, but I recognize as a manager the concern that you have. I think naturally that well, I don't have my eyes on my guys. So how do I know that they're working right? But, yeah. um, you know, there's different technology that gets put into place, you know, whether it be, you know, seeing people's presence. Uh, but more importantly, what I've become passionate about in this space is seeing how to make the agent or the, uh, the, the employee feel confident, just as we want the buyer to have buyer confidence about making this decision. You said something great, which I, I want to also highlight allow the customer to make the decision they want to buy a car allow them to you have to make it easier for them right um yeah, where no they doubt. feel comfortable for that decision and it's it is so much more about buyer confidence so to cadence that i also like to add in like agent confidence or employee confidence that they may not need that second supervisor or manager to look over their shoulder to make sure that their job is done effectively so one thing i see being an opportunity in automotive would be elevating the conversation uh, from being, say, a simple chat on a on a dealer website to a FaceTime conversation with the agent walking around and doing a walk around through that FaceTime. Are there any technologies that you currently either have in place or would like to see in place in automotive that would help both the agent and the customer um, make a, a bond sooner with with your specific dealership as opposed to the brand? Yeah, I think it's important that you use, you know, you got to use things like, like, like you've got to use Zoom, right? You got to use Zoom to where we can have face to face interactions with our customers, no matter where they're located. And I think that people have opened their eyes to that. They're starting to see like, okay, cool, we can do this, right? This is very similar to being in the same room with someone. We can read all the, uh, you know, all the body language, all the different things that go along with that. Right. You know, we can do all those things in a Zoom now. So using Zoom, you know, for example, in the finance department's huge, right? Just because customers not coming in or we're doing deals over the phone doesn't mean that our profits have to go down. As a matter of fact, it's an opportunity for our profits to increase because we do have customers that are now in an emotional state and people make decisions when they're in an emotional state. And right. some part of that emotion right now is fear. Right. So <laughs> right. I'm not saying we prey on people's fears. I'm not saying that whatsoever. But what I am saying is that it's much more difficult to can to to it's much more difficult to show the value of an insurance product when people feel confident. Right. Mm. They're like, oh, I don't need that. Nothing ever is going to go wrong. The world's an awesome place. I'm good. Right. Yeah. But you get a bunch of people who just got put on unemployment or who lost their jobs or who all of a sudden got shooken up. And they missed a paycheck or two and they're like wait a minute okay so maybe life does have some ups and downs and yeah. maybe something like a service contract would be a smart idea to protect myself from those ups and downs of life so when we have an opportunity to have a conversation with a customer via zoom and they're in the comfort of their own home and we can talk to them in regards to the ways that we can protect their purchase this is an expensive item that they're buying right, right. So now I can talk to them about the ways I can protect their purchase and protect their livelihood going forward. And I can do it face to face in a very uh, personable manner using Zoom, even though we're not in the same room. So I think there's a lot of benefits there. I think everybody understands that video is important, but I think what where people are missing the boat is they, they, they have yet to understand that video is good, live video is better. Boom, I'm so glad right? you hit that. So like, uh, before I ended up stepping out of selling cars, right, Bomb Bomb was starting to get like, get some legs on it, right? And video marketing has absolutely had its place, but that's real, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Tell me a little bit about the difference that you've noticed because you do live casts regularly. And while there's a lot of power in video editing and marketing, tell me a little bit about the power that you get just from the live interaction. 
Well, there, there, there's two huge benefits to live. One is my ability to interact with people in real time, right? Super important. Like right now, I'm streaming this. As you're recording this, I'm streaming this live. Derek McLean's watching. I can say hi to him. Victoria Lynn Mullis is watching. I can say hi to her. Neil Davis, Christopher Campbell, Jeff Baker, Sean Jones. They're all watching right now. And I can say hi to them and just by saying their name. I can trigger something in their brain that that increases our bond and our connection, right? Human beings love to hear their own name. It's the most beautiful sound in the English language to all human beings on the planet. So by being able to have that live interaction with Ernestine, who's watching Chris Santmeyer, Cynthia Key, I'm able to drive home our relationship a little bit stronger than I could in just a regular bland video that's being pushed out to the masses, being pushed out to everybody. So that's the first part of it. But the second part is probably the most important part. And it's the main reason people don't want to go live. On live videos, you are going to capture the authentic version of Glenn Lundy or the authentic version of Joey Perez. The authentic version of that person is going to come through in the live. We're going to mess up. We're going to scratch our nose. We're going to sneeze when we don't mean to. All of those things are going to happen. And that's how true relationships and bonds are built. Think about this. When you first meet someone, you're looking to date, right? And you're putting on the show, right? You're, everything's clean and perfect, right? Your shirt's ironed. You got your cologne on. Right, right. You got your hair cut <laughs> right before the date. You're putting on the show and that's the surface stuff. That's what standard video is. Standard video is a first date, right? That's that surface relationship. Live video, that's the long-term relationship. That's where we start to get married. That's where we're we're not afraid to pass gas in front of each other, right? That's where that's that's where we, we walk around in our pajamas or we are we kissing each other with morning breath, right? Those are the long-term relationships, and that's what you can build and develop in live video. That's why I, I love it. I'm an advocate of it. I do as much of it as humanly possible. I'm not afraid to screw up. I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I'm not afraid to, you know, I, I am who I am. Love me, hate me, whatever. That right. part's up to you, right. but I'm going to authentically be me. Plus, I can produce more content by being a live content person than I can as a pre-record. If you're editing and, and trying to make everything polished and perfect all the time, you can't push out as much content as I can. Mm. So at that point, you beat them to death in authenticity, right? As opposed to me having to fall in love with your video production, what I'm falling in love with is you, regardless of the production. And it makes me more apt to want to pick up on you if you are engaging me by saying something like my name during the stream. Is that what you're saying? It, that's exactly right. Dude, I love that. I love that. And I, I really encourage anyone who does uh, end up peering their eyes on this, take advantage of this. Um, there is a big difference, such a massive difference in the consistency of live video. Does that mean you need to all of a sudden, you know, lock yourself into a schedule? Maybe not at first. I think just like they would say in a YouTube world, get started, get comfortable getting in front of the camera, just in the respect of spitting out and, and then be comfortable not being perfect either. Because again, your, your fans will even become more true fans as they build more of a sincere connection with you than it always having to be polished. I really, I really like that about you as well, man. So look, I want to respect our time. There is something I want to uh, touch on though regarding uh, as a leader, your sincerity in the way that you treat people. Because I can tell you without ever having to walk your lot as your employee that I would love working with you as a colleague in the automotive space. And a lot of that has to deal with the genuine interest I see that you have in other people's success. So could you explain to me a little bit about how that gears your decision making when it comes to whether it's a marketing program, a technology solution, what, how does that sincerity of people finding success when you connect with them, how does that, how does that gear your decision making? When it comes to like say hiring someone or hiring a vendor, what are some things you're looking into? You know, ultimately I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, again, I'm a student, you know, and Zig Ziglar said it best, the more people that we can help reach and achieve their goals, the easier it is for us to achieve ours. And so my decision making is always based on what's going to ultimately bring out the best version of 
whether it be my employees, the best version of my customers, the best versions of my business. If I'm choosing a vendor that we're gonna that we're gonna partner up with, I got to make sure that, that vendor's there for the right reasons, right? Like I'm not interested in the vendor that comes in and says, "Oh, we're gonna help you make a ton more money," and you know, we're gonna we're gonna you're gonna make a ton more money. You're gonna get way more leads. You're gonna get way more cars on the road. Okay. Cool. That's great. I've heard that a million times. I want the vendor that comes in and says, dude, I'm going to help you grow and scale your business so that you can hire more people so that you can go out and impact more lives. Right. That to me is far more compelling. And so I just understand how the game now at 42 years old, I didn't realize this before, but I understand now how the game works and it's way 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 harder for one person to go out and change the world but if you can get an army of people on mission that are all focused that are all pointed in the same direction there's absolutely nothing you can't achieve nothing mm. so i like building people and then people help me build businesses man that's good the people that you're collaborating with, you're very, sounds like keen on motive, right? I think yes. I hear that all the time too, is like, just as far as we're going to make you the biggest, fastest machine out there. It's like, even, even if that there's sincerity in that, which I think everyone who's in business, they want that to be the honest truth. I sure. think it's being able to shoot people straight as well as the, the behavioral patterns. Cause sometimes I'll give you the right solution, but if the behavior pattern of yourself as a leader doesn't does it correspond with the necessary change and certainly your staff isn't going to follow suit right so no doubt. that's a big deal man and uh, i really appreciate that about you uh so thank oh, well, you thank again you. for the opportunity to, to just chop it up with me today um i'm super looking forward to maybe a second conversation or furthering it considering that you have uh interest when it comes to uh well, not an interest but a um uh but you're very specific when it comes to the people that you collaborate with if there's somebody that you were looking to collaborate with, whether in automotive or for your podcast, which once again is hashtag rise and grind on Facebook under Glenn Lundy, what, who do you think you'd want to work with? Will Smith. <laughs> right on. <laughs> I'll blame you, man. You might outrun you on the treadmill though, man. <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith, dude, I've been I've been universally uh, putting that out into the universe for a couple of years now. I send him uh, messages on Instagram every once in a while. He probably thinks I'm a nut, but um, certain people you just know that you vibe with, right? That have certain energy levels. Uh, not even necessarily all the the same beliefs. Like I'm all about connecting with people that can help me expand my mind and my and my ability to impact other people's lives and then i want to be able to do the same for them so i seek people that i see fill some of my voids and that i feel some of theirs if that makes sense Absolutely. and will's just one of those guys man will's uh will's a, a great thinker he's a he's a philosopher he's obviously you know highly talented and highly motivated um, for being as big of a star as he is, he still has a very private and secluded side to himself, which is which is mysterious, right? Which is which is awesome. And um, and so one day he will be on my show, hashtag Rise and Grind, and I will be able to serve him in some way that's gonna help help propel his life forward. And uh, and so that's that's the big one that I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got hey, to connect. Got to connect. Oh, you better believe, dude. Look, uh, I'm, I'm gonna drop this one on you, man. Uh, you ever read a book called The 29 Percent Solution? I have not. I'm gonna recommend that one to you, man. So, um, it, the book's premise is on the six degrees of separation, right? Um, which I would even argue is shorter now, smaller now, because of something like Twitter, where I can, or Facebook, where I can hit you direct. And I may deal with one or two people on your team, but it's a lot less of a gatekeeper threshold, right? Um, yeah, but no my doubt. point is on the book, the 29% solution is on the premise of if this, the, the, the study they did for the six degrees of separation was based on the most successful test they did. So they did that same type of example where they said, okay, we're here in America. I wanna see who in our class knows a nurse in France. And so they would start sending out pen pals to those people within their network. And in the most successful test, there were only six degrees away. So right. 
In order to be in the 6% or six degrees away from someone, you have to be within the top 29% of people who know how to network. So that book helps you identify maybe some weak points in your networking game or how to leverage the strengths that you have to kind of do what you're saying, which is regardless of maybe uh, the belief is the uh, observation that if someone can help further the mission to help build that army that you mentioned, that's exactly what this is, is aimed at doing. So I hope that book uh, serves you, man. Get you closer to Will. Man. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta go get him. Will, 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 come yeah, on, we'll Will. <laughs> we'll, find you, Will. <laughs> well, listen, Glenn. Thank you again so much for your time today, brother. God bless you, the team that you have with you as well. I want to thank them for also helping us get this together, and I look forward to our future opportunity to to reconnect again, see what's moved since then. Yeah, thanks, Joey. Man, it's been great. I appreciate you. You got it, and that's the point.